Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today. Exciting stuff. First up, Citibank executive says Bitcoin will trade at $318,000 by the end of 2021. And at first glance, it looks pretty ridiculous, but we've already talked about this in a previous video called 500k Bitcoin, and the results aren't that far off. Also, pretty good article on Cointelegraph talks about Bitcoin chose decentralization and immutability over payments, says Fidelity executives. This is a great piece because it goes over the six misconceptions about Bitcoin. But there is one thing. Bitcoin is not great for everyday use. And more great news. SEC Jay Clayton Head will step down as a U.S. SEC chair by the year's end. And I got to tell you, it doesn't get more bullish than that. Lastly, we'll go over Q of the Day where I talk about Celsius being a scam and what I said on Twitter. So again, all that great stuff. First, go over what's going on in the markets today. It is 10 a.m. getting started early, Monday, November 16th. And uh, usually Sundays aren't that great for crypto because things start to take little dips as people take profits and trade out and do all their little magic. But uh, on Monday, we start to see a little bit of rebound. And today, it is no different. And it's a great Monday because Bitcoin, 2.6%, almost at 16 and a half. Uh, maybe we can hit 17K. Who knows? Quite the rally the last month. It's been up uh, 6% for seven days. So uh, all you Bitcoin holders, whoever you are, me, me and myself and I, uh, congratulations. Did pretty good. Ethereum up 0 0.6 at 458. I was watching Hashoshi and he was talking about how Ethereum 2.0 may be delayed. Uh, it's an interesting piece. I just watched a snippet of it. Smart guy. And uh, he just talks about how they want a certain percentage or a certain number of Ethereum to be staked. And right now, it's only 10% of the total uh, that they actually need or want. So uh, go ahead and check that out. But uh, I'm like, oof, that's never good for Ethereum. They're talking about delays yet again. Anyhow, Tether, almost at 18 billion. So great. Tether's printing money like crazy xrp hey look xrp almost hit my hit 30 cents uh you know 11 for seven days so congratulations xrp holders uh looks like you're really up and uh yeah chain link two percent litecoin is the big winner for today 13 percent up uh 16 for seven days i think people are just getting warming up to the the talk about what litecoin is how it fits into the whole paypal process and uh, people are actually getting into it because really if you take a look at it uh bitcoin bitcoin cash and ethereum litecoin is the cheapest one so if you're looking at getting the cryptocurrency this is the same thing that people talked about in 2017 well if everything's going up why don't they just pick the cheaper one because maybe that'll be the next bitcoin and maybe that's why people are picking up litecoin who knows uh bitcoin cash up three two and a half percent for usd coin let's go down let's uh see what really 7.4 percent for a what ethereum classic Pfft, have fun with that look if you're a fan of ethereum Classic, that's great but uh i think they've had three 51 percent attacks i'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole let's see waves is up 12 percent congratulations waves holders i've heard good things about them need to do some research uh, looks great eight percent for doge whoever holds doge congratulations i like that project i think it works pretty well started off as a joke but uh really it uh, does pretty good things let's see 2.4 for hey did you bite the thing that i really need to do a video on i never always talk about never do did you bite congratulations 11 percent for zillica if you don't know zillica is uh doing staking right now and the staking uh percentage is like super high i think it's like 22 or 29 percent something crazy uh, Dave over at uh, Crazy for Cryptos talks about it all the time, and uh, hey, it's something I should take a look at. Qtum, what? Quant, 5.8%. That's great. Hedera Hashgraph. If you don't know Hedera Hashgraph, it is one of those like super smart uh, type of projects that people should really take a look at and really get into. I don't know if it could be the next big thing, but uh, the prospect of what it could do is pretty powerful. It's just uh, seeing if it can actually do it. And again, as far as like uh, businesses go, you can have the best product in the world, but it doesn't matter unless people actually use it and want it. Look at McDonald's, it's the worst place to eat of all time, yet it serves billions every day. So let that sink in. Uh, sushi, 123% for seven days. What the hell is going on? 12% up. Uh, yeah, have fun with that. See if that crashes again. And that's really all. What? Hey, empty set dollar. I don't know what that is. 17%, 16%. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, Elrond, people talk about how great it is. It could be. Uh, looks like another smart project. Again, let's see if it can actually make it. But again, a lot of good businesses don't make it, even though they've got a great product. And Curve Dow token 6.3. So that's your top 100. Let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, this is good. Uh, Citibank exec says Bitcoin will trade at 318,000 
by uh, the end of 2021. So <laughs> if you're holding Bitcoin, 2021 could be could be your year. Look, I don't know if that's what it's going to be, but I can tell everybody that 2021 is definitely going to be a great year for crypto and digital assets. I could be wrong, but I felt that for quite some time, and we'll see if it actually plays out. But I think, it, I think it's going to be. So writing a report titled Bitcoin 21st Century, uh, Fitzpatrick, uh, the author, makes the surge argument for Bitcoin. He says the digital gold's current trajectory appears to be similar to that of gold in the 1970s. I'm a big fan of history, and I kind of think like what happens before is going to repeat and happen again. So this was interesting to me. He states, before structural changes were implemented in the early 70s, gold had spent 50 years of trading in the $20 to $35 range. I did not know that. Interesting. However, after changes were instituted, gold surged. It recently touched a new all-time high in August of around 1900 per ounce. So imagine you have in 2035, what we're talking about, 30, 40 years ago, and now we're looking at $1,900. So, I mean, given inflation and everything else, I mean, you can put that into account, but still, it's a, it's a marvelous run for uh, for gold and all the gold bugs. No wonder they're always talking about it. But do you really think gold can go 10x and go from 2000 to 20,000? No. There's not a chance in hell it's going to happen. So I could be wrong. Uh, let me know in the comment section, but I don't see that ever happening unless there's like massive inflation, but who knows? Uh, states with the COVID-19 pandemic still hemorrhaging economies around the world, governments will continue to uh, responding to the crisis by printing more money. This in turn will benefit safe haven assets, which perform well in inflationary periods. So uh, spoiler alert, uh, they're going to keep printing. And also with uh, Joe Biden as a president-elect, if you uh, think that uh, Trump still has a chance, sure, whatever. Um, but uh, if you think that uh, Biden won't keep printing money and then the Federal Reserve won't keep printing, you're delusional. Uh, it's going to be money printing out the wazoo, and we're going to see a ton of money come into play. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. But uh, again, as money gets printed, it really benefits the top because the top people now have all this money. And then when it gets disseminated into the lower class, uh, to the middle, upper middle, middle, lower class, uh, that's when it starts to depreciate. So I don't think this is going to be good for uh, uh, the economy uh, in the long term. Short term, yeah, I mean, we need a little stimulus, especially with COVID-19 coming back, roaring to life. Uh, I'll be going back to El Paso in a couple of weeks. We'll see how that works out. The hotbed, the hottest place in the country with coronavirus, but uh, got to go back. So we'll see. But again, printing money is good for gold, silver, digital assets, cryptocurrency. And Fitzpatrick notes this, gold has restrictions such as storage, non-portable, and can possibly be even called yesterday's news in terms of a financial hedge. Bitcoin is the new gold. Bitcoin is digital gold. It's finite, only 21 million. We're not going to find more Bitcoin. We're going to find a lot more gold as time goes on. We're not going to find more Bitcoin. I can send it to anyone anywhere in the world for in less than 30 minutes for next to nothing. Also, it's the best performing asset class ever. It's uh, outperformed all stocks, oil, gold, silver, ever. So uh, it used to cost a penny or a nickel. Now it costs uh, almost 17000 That's why I'm heavily invested. And that's my Bitcoin elevator pitch. Anyhow. To support his view, Fitzpatrick says the same thing that I say, which is limited supply, ease of movement across borders, and opaque ownership. Or you can see who owns it quite easily by just taking a look at the blockchain. Consequently, Fitzpatrick believes more investors will choose Bitcoin over gold as a result. And I believe that to be true. And it'll take some time uh, because really all the wealth in America, I don't know how it works out in the rest of the world. I assume it's the same way but it's in the hands of the older population. We call them the baby boomers here. Matter of fact, they have uh, the vast lion's share. So this is the percentage of US household wealth by age of generations median uh, cohort or what they actually own. So you got millennials uh, not looking too hot. Gen Xers, eh, not too bad. Baby boomers, far and away the biggest. But uh, so they are the older generation. They are used to what they are used to, which is gold and silver, so on and so forth, stocks. So uh, they're going to hold on to that. But as time goes on, it'll flip over to Bitcoin. It just only makes sense. Now to finish up, unlike other digital currencies, such as central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, Bitcoin cannot be confiscated, therefore making it a more secure asset. Also, CBDCs are centralized, so uh, you can shut them down at any time. So that's what we got for that one. Pretty interesting piece there. But again, uh, check out that, that video on uh, 500K Bitcoin. Uh, one of the things that we took a look at was uh, the circulating supply and the market cap and what the actual market cap would be 
uh, for 500,000. It really came out, it came out to nine and a half trillion dollars, which seems like a lot. But if you take a look at the um, global amount of money, uh, just gold itself has 12 trillion. Uh, so I'm just saying, if it just eats up a little bit of uh, gold, a little bit of currency, a little bit of tokenization, a little bit of store of value, uh, just take put this all together and 500,000 is not that far away. So uh, before I was like, that's ridiculous. But now I'm like, that seems okay. I, I have a conservative view of uh, 150,000, but anywhere from 150,000 to 500K, hey, I'm still pretty happy. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.